Our community is in crisis. Behavioral health problems can happen to anyone at any time. This could happen to you or someone you love. Currently, there's a lack of resources for these patients. He came home from work and he said, Mom, can I talk to you in private? You know, Mom, I've been hearing voices and now I'm seeing things. There are creatures on the top of buildings that are following me and it's really making it hard for me to concentrate and making it hard for me to drive. You don't know what to do when your child says something like that. And um, got him into a psychologist and um, got him on some medications and then thought he was doing okay. And then he totally fell apart and he said he'd been thinking about killing himself that the voices and the creatures had not gotten any better, and in fact, they had gotten worse. They were making it so that he couldn't sleep at night. And I knew that he needed to be hospitalized because we had tried outpatient, and it wasn't working for him. You know, things were really hard, but Chad always seemed to pull through. Then in January of just last year, so just one year ago, he had researched schizophrenia and felt like there wasn't any hope. And he had decided that it wasn't going to get any better, and this was the only thing that he could do. So while I was in the living room here, not knowing, he um, went through our basement door and around the corner and jumped off the bridge. That's just a half a block from our house that we can see from our kitchen window. I would be the one responsible for her care as it began to deteriorate. It happened what seemed like to me very quickly over a period of a year as she would go from independent living to assisted living and then from there as things began to change for her would result in a, in a, in a move towards memory care. But it blew up and she, had, uh, she became really frightened and struck a nurse and I think some perhaps threatened management over there. So that would prompt a call back to me immediately saying, hey, this is out of control here. We don't know what to do with this woman. We're sending her to Evergreen. She was admitted through the emergency care department and would remain there for the two weeks that it would take before they could find a bed at Northwest Geriatric Psychiatry. We are experiencing an alarming increase in patients with behavioral health needs in our emergency department. Patients often need to be boarded until a final destination can be found. Beds meant for short-term emergency department patients are increasingly used for long-term boarding of behavioral health patients. Emergency department resources are strained. The reason that they are currently being housed in the emergency department is there's not enough inpatient beds for patients to go to who have behavioral health needs for the demand that's there in the community. The average stay for our psychiatric patients varies so much and it could be as little as a day in the emergency room and then off to the right facility or it could be months in the hospital trying to stabilize them. We have two psychiatric and behavioral health beds available but our need today is actually we have over 10 behavioral health patients in our department and when that happens, that actually causes a backflow into our waiting room because we really only have 15 beds available. And with 10 of those being taken up by behavioral health patients, that's causing the wait times to, to get longer in the department. Nationally, nearly 25% of all adult hospital stays involve some type of behavioral health issue. I was totally unprepared, bewildered by the process of this thing, terribly frightened for my mom and what was going on. Everybody in our community is affected by behavioral health. Everybody has a family member or a friend who has been in a situation similar to this. And it's our job and it's our responsibility to make sure we take care of our community and our patients. And this transitional care unit will help us do that. I can imagine it'd be an exciting thing to have a, sort of an entire wing dedicated to this volume of people coming down with a dementia, Alzheimer's, behavioral syndromes. To have a resource like this gives hope to the entire community and expands resources such that we all get taken care of. 
Evergreen is really taking that big and bold step in building this transitional care unit, which is really what's needed to provide the care for people with mental illness and to really finally make a difference. From a community perspective, having a transitional care unit will help our behavioral health patients be in a safer location, but it'll also help free up more beds in our emergency department to take care of our community. From a patient care standpoint, from a safety standpoint, from what's the right thing to do for our patients, having a unit for them to be able to go to is the best situation for everyone. Evergreen Health is creating a 14-bed transitional care unit. This unit will be designed to serve the unique needs of patients who have behavioral health and underlying medical issues and are receiving care at Evergreen Health. The unit will ensure that their unique needs are met as they are transitioning to their final care setting. It will have safe rooms, constant monitoring, and stabilized care until they can be transferred to an appropriate behavioral health facility. If I could have my wishes met on a transitional care unit, there's two very simple things I would want. I'd want the unit to be big enough to be able to help all our behavioral health patients at Evergreen that need this help. And secondly, I'd have the unit open now. To enhance the care um, uh, for our hospital district, uh, we need to and we will, with the proceeds of the gala, build a state-of-the-art transitional care facility. Mm -hmm.